Hey guys, how's it going? In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how event binding in Angular works. We often need to program our application to react to user interactions, and we can use event binding to achieve this. A few examples of when events are fired are when a user clicks a button or presses a key on a keyboard. With event binding, we have the option to call methods in the component class when an event gets fired. So I'm going to um, start coding and show you a few examples. So I'm going to go to my project here that I've just created and go to app component HTML. Let's delete all this placeholder content. And I'm going to create a button that says click me. And I'm going to um, attach an event handler to this. So in brackets, I'm going to type in click. And in speech marks, I'm going to type a method name. So I'm going to call this on button click and save that and go to the component class. We can delete this and we can create a method called on button click and we can uh, show an alert that says you just clicked a button. Save that and we can serve this in the command line. We can do ng serve to serve our application. Okay, so once the live development server is up and running, we, we can go to localhost 4200 and we have our button here that we have defined in our template. And when we click the button, we now get an alert that says you just clicked a button. So we have just created an event handler and attached that event handler to the click event on this button. So we can put any code here and it will run when we click this button here. So if I do console.log hello world, That will now run when I press this button. So I'm going to inspect and go to the console. And when we click this button, we now see Hello World is printing to the console. So we can attach events to any valid HTML event on HTML elements such as button. OK, so we're going to, we're going to go to the template and we're going to create another event listener. And we're going to attach it to the mouse over event. And we're going to say on button mouse over. And in the component class, we're going to create this method. Like that. And here we can do an alert saying mouse over. We now get an alert each time we mouse over this button. There we go. OK, so there's a ton of events that you can listen to. And you can actually find them online by searching HTML events and yep, JavaScript events. So there's a list. OK, so here's some common HTML events. So change, click, mouse over, which we've just used, key down and load. And you have to bear in mind that when you're working with Angular, you don't need to put the on. So you just put the change or the click or the mouse over, not the on. OK, so for example, on key down, you just put key down or on mouse out, you just put mouse out. Uh, so let's see if we can find a list. JavaScript event lists event reference on MDN. This is probably the best reference you can get. And yeah, here we go. So here we have events that don't have on. So here you'd actually use the event name and uh, because there's no on prefixed. So yeah, you could use scroll, resize, key up, key down, key press, uh, click, and all of these you can use in Angular just by surrounding it in brackets, and then calling a method within these speech marks. OK, so now we can go and try something a bit more advanced. OK, so let's create an input of type text. And we're going to create a, um, and, and we can set the value. Actually, we won't set the value. So we have an input of type text. And then I'm going to create a button. And on click of this button, 
I'm going to say on click and I'm going to go to the component class. I'm going to delete these methods here and create on click. And here what I want to do is I want to um, basically create a mini form and on click I want to get the value of this input and print it out to the console. So I want the uh, input value which will be of type string and I want to do a console.log input value but we have to find a way to pass in this input value to the on click method in this event handler. So what we can do is we can create a template reference on the input by just calling it hashtag input. So that will create a template reference variable called input that we can now use in our code. So we can put here input.value, save that, go to our app and actually let's say, um, let's put uh, some text in this button here. So let's say uh, click or um, or submit we put submit um, save that go here and we have our small little form here and we can type something in so I'm gonna say hello world and press submit and now we get it printed to the console so whatever text I put in here I can press submit and it will then print out the console one two three submit ABC submit there we go so that's how you do something a bit more advanced with the inbuilt events on HTML elements. So now what I want to show you is how to emit events in custom components and listen to them from the parent component. So I'm going to go to the command prompt and I'm going to uh, type in ng generate component. And I'm going to call this, um, I'm going to call this name, name component and just press enter and I'm going to go to name, go to name.component.html and I'm going to copy over this, this code here in app component.html, paste it here and I'm just going to add um, a heading here that says what's your name and I'm going to add a placeholder to the input, enter name here, save that and yeah we, we can keep the bus in the same and in the component class name.component.ts i'm going to create an event emitter now um let me show you the documentation for parent component listening to child event so the child component exposes an event emitter property with which it emits events when something happens the parent binds to that event property and reacts to those events. So we have to create an output property, which is of type event emitter, and we have to use the output decoration. So as you can see in this example here, they have an output here and they've created a new event emitter with the type that will be emit. So we can now create this. Um, so we can do at output, and that will import from Angular Core here. That will import from Angular Core. And in brackets, we can type in, uh, actually, we don't have to type in anything here. We can just leave that empty and then type in the name of the event here. So I'm going to say um, name submit of type event emitter and uh, the type string because. Uh, because the type will be the name. So the name is of type string. So, and then we can do that. Actually, no, we can do new event emitter of type string. And there we go. We have to actually import event emitter, apparently. Um, all right, yeah, okay, so it's done the wrong import here. So we can import this properly by importing it from Angular Core. And there we go, that's done. So now, um, on uh, this button click, so let's create the on click method here. So on click, it will get um, the name of type string, and we will do name submit 
dot omit and we now have to omit the value which will be the name there we go and so that's that component done now in the child component we're going to have to create a okay well let's first delete this uh, and let's create the component in the app component so I'm going to do app dash name and that's what we use to get the name component as, as you can see here the select is app name so that will then uh, create our component and uh, we can now um, listen for this event so the event name is name submit so if we type in name submit equals and uh, we can um, type in a method here so I'm going to type in on name submit we can actually now uh, pass in the event parameter and what the event parameter is is it's the data that's sent with the event so the event emitter as you can see here will emit an event uh, with content with a value so here we're using string which is the name so we are emitting the name uh, with the event right so you can think of it as the event data and angular uses the dollar sign event parameter to hold this data so save this and now i'm going to go to app component.ts and now in app component.ts i'm going to create the method on name submit and uh, it's going to take in a um, a name which is the event data um, Actually, we can just use this and then we can do an alert and we can type in name so what we've just done here is we've created a new component called name called name and uh, we've just uh, put an input and a button which says what's your name and you have to enter your name in the input box and when you click the submit button it will then execute this code here which will run the on click method with input dot value so in uh, the name.component.ts, the onClick method will emit an event on the name submit event emitter, which we can listen to in the parent component, which is app.component.html, by typing in the event name, which is name submit, and then executing the on name submit method, and uh, and we are passing in the event data using dollar sign event, which we can then grab in the um, component class app.component.ts which we are getting name string so we know that the event data that's being held in the dollar sign event variable is name so we can just type in name string because we know that's what the event data holds so we know that the event data which we are passing in in the template um, using this dollar sign event variable that angular creates for us uh, to hold our event data we know that this holds the name because we just created a custom component which emits the name which is of type string so we we in the app component.ts the parent component class we can just type in name string because we know what data is being sent back and then we can do alert name here just to show you that it works so save this now and um go to our app and it says what's your name and i'm going to type in andy submit and we get an alert that says andy there we go so we can type in anything here and we can now get this value back. So yes, that's how event binding works in custom components. One last thing that I forgot to show you was how the dollar sign event variable is used uh, with inbuilt HTML JavaScript events. So for example, if I create an input here and I attach the event uh, change and I say on input change, as the method that we called, um, so if you go to appcommon.ts and create the method on input change, and we want to get the event uh, of type any, and if you want to console log this event, save that and uh, pass in the dollar sign event here. Okay, so let's save this and uh, go to our app. And okay, so now we have this text box here and um, each time the value of this changes, we should get a console log 
of the event object. So I'm going to type in ABC and click out of it. Okay, so now we have this event object come up in the console. If we open it up, we can see uh, some some of the fields in this object. And yeah, so we uh, so type change, uh, timestamp, uh, the return value. The target means the element in which the event originated from, which is this input here, and that's why the target is input. Okay, so we have all of this information available to us whenever we bind to an event on a HTML element. We've gone through all the major features of event binding, including how to bind to DOM events, as well as how to bind to events on our own custom components. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you have any questions, be sure to post them down in the comments below and I'll answer them as soon as possible. See you next time.